Hey everybody, welcome to The Blacklist, the show where we interview the elite. Today we have uh, a buddy of mine actually. Um, she was gonna help me out with the event that I was throwing here in Vegas. Her name is Hannah and she's phenomenal. Hannah, for people that don't know you, um, what is it that you do and who are you? Well, you kind of touched on it a little bit. My company runs events and we are based out of Virginia currently. I just moved back from Dubai, so we were running a couple events over there, doing some production, a lot of influencer work, which yeah. is pretty fun and quite chaotic, which is why I'm out here partially. Um, so a lot of my work has been based around influencers, events, PR, and marketing. Um, a lot of my story comes from what happened to me in 2014, and my company is named Bookful Agency. Yeah. So. Yeah, you actually told me a little bit about that on uh, on message, but I think the way that we kind of got to like uh, kind of got to talking is because of Dubai, right? I was like, oh, I'm gonna speak in Dubai, and then you're like, hey, I live there. Like, literally, if you need any you know recommendations or whatever, like, let me know. Um, and then that's when I started learning more about you and kind of what you do, right? Um, why specifically? You know, I think like out of there's so many things that you can do in the digital marketing space, right? You can run ads, you can do funnels, you can do all that type of stuff. Why did you end up choosing the industry that you're in? Oh, that's a fantastic question. Um, I started in events because I love being super creative. I mean, in high school and college, I was the prom committee president, and I did all the events for SGA. Yeah. So I love creating experiences for people and something that they can take away with that experience, something that they're going to remember a certain individual or a topic or something that they want to remember and then come back and say, hey, I remember this company put on this experience. I want to replicate that. Yeah. So that's kind of how I run my business, but it's all based on the host experience, the guest experience, and even the vendors. Yeah, no, 100%. It, but did you have an experience yourself where you're like, this event was shit, like I got to do something better, or like how did you end up, um, you know, why is that like, like a, either a passion for you or why is it something that you care about? My family runs events all the time. They yeah. love doing parties, private events. Um, they throw the largest 4th of July event ever. It's a, a week-long event. And oh, shit. they have private masseuses come. Yeah. Everyone signs up for that. They do private tours of local zoos and they do a lot of philanthropy philanthropy work oh that's a hard word <laughs> just caught off a six hour flight so I'm a little tired yeah um <laughs> so it's all kind of centered around what the experiences my parents have set for people and the reactions that I saw yeah and I wanted to replicate that yeah I mean that's good because like I've never heard of a week-long like you know July 4th or 4th of July like event where they hire you know masseuses and all this type of stuff that's that's phenomenal sounds like I need to go there but you're more than welcome to. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so I know the event side is just one part, right? Um, what else do you end up doing for, for clients? Production. So we do a lot of social media content. Okay. And a lot of that is also based off of the website content. Um, a lot of companies are food-based, beverage, so they need some menu updating. Yeah. Uh, a lot of small companies for sure, but a lot of e-commerce brands as well. Um, fashion, makeup. So we're out here and we're doing some wig company and really? extensions for influencers. So we're yeah. trying to help out that business and expand their market. Yeah. And how does that work? Like, let's say, you know, they end up hiring you and you're like, okay, this is what we're looking to accomplish. Like, how do you and your team start, you know, to, to, to kind of expand them and then, you know, go that way? Um, so I just flat out, I am terrible at content. Yeah, I can tell you exactly what I want to see, but I cannot take the picture. I cannot do the video. I can't do the editing whatsoever. Yeah, but I can put the shoot sheet together and tell you exact clippage and what needs to transition. Um, so I put everything together for the client, send them the proposal. Production yep. team is sent out and they just make all the magic happen. So the client comes to us and says they have a vision. I write out that vision and our team just makes it happen. Yeah, which is a, a big skill in itself. Like people that delegate to other people, you got to like be like a real like, uh, you know, how, how would I say it? like manager? Because, you know, either you're managing clients or you're managing a team. And I feel like they're both completely different skill sets. 
Um, so you realize like, Hey, I'm not good at like taking the photo, but I know exactly what I need to look for and do that. Um, how do you go about, you know, hiring the right team for specific items? That's a fantastic question because not a lot of people know that I've gone through three different sets of individuals in New Jersey, Miami, Texas, California, and finally landed on a team in New York as my go-to girls. And our company is a female foundation. So I love working with women because we can vibe off of each other very well, but I have more of a masculine energy so I can do the delegations. Yeah. But it it took a, a long time. It took about five years for me to find this solid team. Yeah. And even through that, I gave them very small projects of trying to test out the waters. Are you able to take on this task? Can I give you more responsibility? And can you even do it on your own if I need to back out of a situation? Can right. I rely on you as a, a GM, if you want to call it that? Yeah. Um, so it it's definitely a vetting process and you have to be patient. Yeah. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the agency is called Fifth Bull Agency, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what, what, how did you come up with the name? Um, so that's definitely an icebreaker for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, it's confusing as well when I try to tell my email over the phone. I have to spell <laughs> it out like F as in Frank. I. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in 2014, I was living in Barcelona, Spain as an interior designer intern, and I hated the job. I was so bored. They put me in the American corner because everybody else was speaking Spanish and doing their own projects. And I was doing the most tedious work of doing scaling for furniture. Um, So I would call out sick as often as possible. And I would go to clubs. Uh, (laughs) And one night, um, there was a bunch of LAPD officers at this club. They heard me speaking English and Spanish because I was working with some DJs at the time. Yeah. So they started vibing with me and they're like, we're going running with the Bulls tomorrow. Do you want to come? I'm like, yeah, why not? Me in my like early 20s, just adrenaline junkie at this point. Yeah. Just living her life abroad. So we get on a bus from Barcelona to Pamplona, get there around 3 a.m. Everyone is throwing sangria on each other dressed in the all white, red bandana, red sash. And I told everyone, I'm just going to take pictures. Yeah. You guys have a great time. This is the stupidest thing anyone could ever do. Yeah. But it was just such a beautiful experience. I'm like, I can't miss out on this. Right. We definitely need to share some sort of moment. So I found tennis shoes and we all line up in the street. What you see on the TV, this girl is crying next to me. I'm like, get your act together we have to run now we have no way out so i'm dragging her and we run down the street what you see um like the very large bulls there's about seven that were chasing us there's probably about 300 people running down the street yeah and what they don't show you is what happens inside the arena so they cut off the feed once you get inside and i thought we were done because i'm basing it off of television so (laughs) high five yeah we all did it woo and everyone's like, no, they released six teenage bulls now. I'm like, okay. Like, I did the bigger ones. That yeah. Like, a thousand pounds. I could do a teenage bull. It's like 600 pounds, 700 pounds. So they release um, the first, second, third. They all come out for a minute or two each. Um, the fourth one came out, and I was in a big group, and I didn't see it. It sideswiped me, and oh, I fell fuck. to the ground. I was like, okay, like, I, I got hit. I'm good. Got got my my energy. So I'm trying to get out of the arena, trying to jump out the side. And this Spanish guy grabs my arm and is pulling me to the side. I'm like, dude, get off me. Like, at this moment, this is the worst time to say stranger danger. Yeah, yeah. We're all fighting for our lives at this point. And he's trying to pull me. And I look forward, and there's a black bull with his head down, cocking his hoof back, something out of a movie. Yep. And charges me, hits me dead on the stomach, blacked out instantly, tossed into the air, landed on my head, woke up eight hours later in the ICU with a fractured skull and a bruised brain. Oh, fuck. So I was hit by the fifth bull. I like that. I like that. That's a crazy story. And yeah. let me ask you a question, though. Did you get hit because he held you? Or he was trying to move you and then you were like, don't touch me? And then <laughs> boom, he like, you got... This- I, I'm, I would assume that he was trying to pull me out of the way. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, wrong place, wrong time, I guess. Yeah. But everything that happened, it actually saved my life. So the, the fracture, it is right here above my ear and it will forever be there. Like after I die, you'll be yeah. able to see that. Um, so if it went horizontal, I would have died instantly. Wow. If it was a centimeter thicker or deeper, I would have died instantly. Damn. So every part of that was just a wake up call for me because I was being rebellious and stupid. <laughs> yeah. College kid, get your act together. You have some sort of purpose in this world. So figure it out. Yeah. And did that did that moment come from you come uh, right after? Or did it take like some time to be like, hey, like I have some purpose and it, stuff like it that? It took some time. Um, my family is very religious, very godly, um, raised Southern Baptist. So yeah. when my mom, my dad flew my mom and my sister over to come get me. And my mom was one of the first things that she said was, God is trying to tell you something right now. Like, I don't know what it is, but you need to figure out what your purpose is yeah. because this doesn't happen every day. Yeah. yeah. Damn, that's powerful. Yeah. So, uh, so that's when Fifth Bull Agency was born, right? Um, how, how, so how long have you been with the, or how long have you had that business per se? Um, about five years. Okay. Yeah. About five years. Okay. Damn. Um, and how does the next five years look like? What are you looking to do? Are you looking to get out of events or, you know, what's the, what's the main goal? Um, expansion for sure. I want to work with more women. I want to take it across the States and then over to Europe and the Middle East. I loved working in the Middle East. It was, it was so much fun. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a lot of opportunity for women over there and there's a lot of diversity. So that would be an incredible experience and opportunity for me to bring that. Um, but for now, obviously control is, you know, a big issue for a lot of companies. So starting small, building that out and um, doing as much hiring as possible. Yeah. What did you guys end up doing during COVID? Because uh, that's when a lot of like the events kind of shut down. They stopped completely. Yeah. So my business partner and I, um, he owned a couple venues in Austin, Texas, and we were renting those out at the time. It was probably within three months of having that contract that COVID happened. Damn. So can't do anything with venues, can't do anything with events. Everyone's just kind of chomping at the bit to come up with the next idea. Yep, so yep. had to sell the venues. And um, that's when he built out a um, hybrid platform and it's called Livestream. Yeah. So um, that's it was a competitor of Zoom at the time. Yeah. And yeah, that was just like the innovation part. So just building something that not a lot of people were able to do and trying to help as much as possible. No, that's good. Cause I, f yeah, I know a lot of people where like, you know, COVID hit and uh, the, the guest that I just had on, like he had, you know, a big old office, whatever he said, he was spending like 13,000 a month. And then all of a sudden like Vegas shuts down and like, there's nothing open, like hotels are closed, like all this type of stuff. Did it affect you guys uh, aside from like the event space? Did it affect you uh, business wise, financially and stuff like that or no? Um, or did you just pivot and, Pivot, for sure. Um, yeah. I had to rely a lot on influencer marketing because that's when, like, e-commerce was starting to boom a lot yeah. more. And oh, yeah, so could true. And stay in their houses and film their own content. And that's just kind of what I relied on at, the, at that moment. Um, yeah. It wasn't as fun. <laughs> and it wasn't as creative. It was right. just more delegating. Yeah. But it was something that had to be done. Yeah. I think the world is uh, pivoting like crazy right now. Number one, like, I mean, I don't know how you feel about this, but what, what, well, actually, I'll just ask you. How do you feel about cancel culture? Oh, God. Um, I just saw Chris Delio. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the comedian yep. in D.C. He was phenomenal. I've, like, I've seen him in movies and You travel stuff, so much. I do. <laughs> I love like, traveling. you're in Dubai. You're, like, here. You're there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nobody can ever catch me. I <laughs> Yeah, everyone's always like, oh, like, let's go out, let's hang out. I'm like, oh, no, like, can you meet me in yeah. this state at <laughs> this time? Nope, okay, I can't see you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I saw him, and he was talking about, like, the cancel, cancel culture of what happened in his circumstance. And I think it's kind of uh, agreed that people have more of a power hunger. Yep. And it's not very justified. It's just, you know, a citizens arrest 
yeah at this yeah point. basically just kind of listening to oh you're offended like okay let's walk on eggshells around each other i'm i'm not that type of person like yeah. i love constructive criticism and if it hurts you like let's talk it out let's yeah. compromise let's figure out what your opinion is versus my opinion and let's blend it in some way and build from there but i'm not gonna be all hot and heavy and upset about something because we don't agree like that's right. that's the whole point of building your personality your morals your values your characteristic yeah is interacting with other people and figuring out who you are yeah no i agree 100 percent. and i think uh not to put a stereotype on it but i feel like um you know as a woman you saying that i think that's that's it's great <laughs> Because, like, a lot of people right now are very hot and heavy. Everything triggers them, and, you know, they just, I don't know why, but for some reason, like, if you have an opposing view and it's something that it's really offending them, it's like they, wanna, they want your life to end, basically. Not to die, to end. Like, no business being done with you, all that type of stuff. I don't know if you've heard about the recent stuff with, like, Kanye, mm -hmm. like him being kind of, like, shut down and everything, and stu you know, yeah. stuff like that, but... I just think it's crazy. Do you, are you censoring anything that you say because of that stuff? Because you're just like, you know, I don't want to like potentially, you know, get offend people or no? Um, yes and no. I mean, I try to be respectful, of course, try yeah. to be considerate and smart because I do have very high end clients. So whatever I put out there is a reflection of them as well. Yeah. But I um, like that. No, I'm, I'm not going to censor myself. I'd rather open it up for discussion and understanding because I'm outspoken about my faith, Christianity. I'm Republican and conservative yeah. and I like guns. Yeah, I go yeah. shooting. Um, I hunt and we eat what we hunt. We don't <laughs> just kill for sport. Yeah, um, I'm straight. I'm dating. So it's just like I'll be outspoken about who I am because that allows you to get a view of me and you can vibe with it or you don't and I'm not going to be hurt by it because there's how many people on this planet we don't have to get along at yeah. all but just keep your opinions to yourself but if it matters if it's going to help me become a better person right then yeah of course like you know, actual constructive feed, feedback you yeah. know like criticism where it's not like um, you know, you're not telling them because like, you know, you got insulted or whatever. It's more so like, Hey, cause I agree. Feedback loops are important, you know, like that's why like for the event and stuff like that, that, you know, if we just threw like, it's super important to get feedback because how are you going to make it better if you don't. Right. Yeah. But it's a lot different where, um, you know, if it's if somebody hated it and like, whatever, I don't know, you know, it's just, it's just crazy, crazy time that we live in. Um, you know, uh, about the traveling stuff, are you traveling for fun or like you're going here and there because of business? Or both? Um, both. I try to make time for myself. Um, I'm not very good at it. I'm yeah. usually the type of person who's like in and out because I do a lot of fitness training. So I'm at home trying to focus on that, going through like a bulking phase and then bodybuilding, cutting, all of that. Really? So all of my, my supplements and like my home <laughs> base is there. My gym is there. Yeah. All my friends are there. So it's comfort. Um, I love being home, but I love traveling as well because I get bored very easily. Yeah. I try to travel at least once a month and experience some new culture. I've always been that type of person. My parents, you know, very blessed family that they're able to bring us around the entire world yeah. and experience such incredible things that not a lot of people would be able to experience in their entire lives. Like Notre Dame, I mean, seeing that burn is just like, I was there. I've yeah. been in there before. Um, what happened with um, the art recently? Oh my gosh, the artist. I'm totally blanking on him right now. But um, there was just you know activists that threw soup on. Oh, his I saw canvas. that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I I've seen the art in person, so yeah. it's like there's moments that you're going to miss in this life and history and culture is very important. Yeah. And I try to bring that to the table wherever I go, but I can't even remember the painter's name. So I'm obviously <laughs> not bringing that to this table. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All yeah. good. Um, what city is your favorite? Cause I'm going to Dubai and I know you've lived there for, for a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, which one's your favorite and why? Um, city, I think Sicily is my favorite. And where's that at? Italy. Okay. Yeah. I love the countryside. I would love to have a country home out there, have a yeah. vineyard, just relax and kind of escape. Um, country, Iceland. Iceland yeah. is 
beyond gorgeous. You have every single type of environment. You have volcanoes, you have glaciers, you have the sea, you have forests. It's like the most bizarre world and you get to drive around the entire thing in a week. It's Damn. so beautiful. So you're not into like the high city vibe where it's like, you know, tall buildings. You're more like, don't talk to me out in the cuts, like, you know, doing your own thing. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm a, I'm a country girl, so yeah. I like nature as much as possible. Um, I'm not like really into the beach, but I'd really be in the mountains. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to get into the beach more recently, but, you know, it's like body dysmorphia is like messing with my head right now. But the mountains, I love being active. I love you know, getting my heart rate going and yeah. experiencing something that is just mesmerizing, like climbing to the top of a waterfall and just overlooking like, wow, this is, this is all created for our enjoyment. This is yeah. insane. But, I mean, human architecture is pretty cool too. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I agree. I, I don't think, now that I'm talking to you, I don't think I've been near as many places that you've been. Um, but you were talking about like, you know, kind of like your fitness lifestyle and what's part of giving yourself time? Like, is that, is fitness not giving yourself time or like, is it part of your routine where it's like, you know, it's non-negotiable for me. I got to get it done. A uh, non-negotiable for sure. Um, I have competed as an NPC bikini bodybuilder in 2015 and 16. So after the bull accident. Um, oh, shit. I, I fell into like a bad crowd. Like I wasn't supposed to go back to college. I wasn't supposed to do volleyball anymore. I wasn't supposed to work. I wasn't supposed to train. So I got super depressed Yeah. and, um, started like smoking weed, like, and just gained a lot of weight, just very sad. And then it was just like one day that it just snapped. I was like, you know what? This is stupid. Like there's worse things that happen in the world to other people I can absolutely get over this. So yeah. I like shed all the weight, got my life together, and I did two competitions. Um, and then after that, I've just kind of maintained that mentality and that lifestyle. But right now, I'm not training to compete again. Um, it was definitely difficult, for sure. Um, I support everybody that does it, though. Yeah, It's a great community. Um, it definitely makes you a disciplined person, and that's what I love. I like routine. Yeah. And I like structure. So that's definitely non-negotiable. What, what is your routine? Because um, you travel a lot. I, when I travel, it's so hard to keep the routine. Like, it is. You know? So, like, what, what's yours? For traveling or just, like, a regular day? Just, like, a regular day. Uh, wake up at 5 a.m., check all my emails, make sure that I didn't miss anything, go to the gym for two hours, and just have, like, me time. Yeah. That's, that's like, my self-care. Yeah. And then go home. Um eat and all of my meals are the exact same my dietitian is like we need to change something <laughs> <laughs> but it's usually like the same exact thing every single day just do emails calls eat sleep devotions see my parents maybe yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good that's good what about uh, what about like when you're traveling traveling um i try to keep the same routine um i love exploring when i travel i get distracted very easily i try to go to like a local coffee shop and um do some work out of there try to find a new gym and make some friends yeah meet somebody that is doing better than me i like talking to women in the gym and say like you know are you training for something how long have you been training what can i do to improve myself yeah and make friends that way yeah um but otherwise, yeah, I try to explore as much as possible when I travel because back to the, the culture thing. Right, um, right. You may not ever see it again. Yeah. Um, what's one tip of advice for the people that are listening? Because um, what, I, what I like about this conversation is it sounds like you've done a lot in your life and you have you know, the blessing to kind of continue to do so. Um, what's one tip of advice that you'd give them to kind of focus on what matters in life? Because I feel like you have the blessing to do a lot of it, if not all, right? So. That's, that's a very vague question. <laughs> yeah, I can get more specific if you want. Let's, let's kind of dive into okay. that a little bit more. Yeah, so for, for a lot of people, I don't think they, they'll, at le unless they're an entrepreneur, and unless they focus on that, I think a lot of people are focusing on work or they're focusing on uh, something specific. It sounds like you have both work and you're able to travel and experience a lot of life in your experience what what actually matters because you're able to do both mm -hmm. not everybody's able to do both 
right? What actually matters, uh, you know, in life in general? Um, not saying no to opportunities. And I guess that goes hand in hand with business and in life, creating experiences for yourself yeah. and memories. Because you could take pictures of yourself all day and post that, but once you post something that is like out of this world that nobody else gets to see, it's like, wow, I'm interested in your life. You yeah. do something really cool. How can I be more like you? And you just create that balance of saying yes to opportunities. If your friends are like, hey, we're going to the beach this weekend. Do you want to come? Well, I got to work. Yeah. But I'd like to go to the beach. So <laughs> when can I find time for myself, whether that's waking up earlier and doing all my work or staying up later? I mean, you find that balance for yourself, but not saying no to experiences and memories that you're on your deathbed and reflecting like, no, I was behind a desk all day, every single day, working for a dollar. Yeah. When I could have been having friends, having family time, just going out by myself. I love exploring by myself. I travel by myself all the time. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's so dangerous. Like you're a female. No, <laughs> I do tactical training. Um, yeah. So I'm not worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just making those memories for yourself and you get to share that. Cool. Well, I appreciate you being on the show. Where can people find you? Um, you can find me at the Hannah Carlson on Instagram and fifthbowl.com is our company. So if you have any further questions, I'm always open to DMs. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.